Hey, this is Rob from Producer Tech, and I'm gonna run you through how to use Machina version two as a plugin inside a door like Live or Logic, including how to automate its parameters. In the first movie, I showed you a lot of the new features in this update, which really take the software up a level in terms of its standalone functionality, with the improvements to the arrangement area playback and looping, as well as pattern editing, making it basically as comprehensive as a door in itself now. Whereas before, I was tending to prefer running the software as a plugin and mixing on separate tracks in the door. With the new mixer section and other additions like sidechaining now, there's much less of a need to do this. Here's a project I've been working on, which is actually largely stems from a new track I've been doing with UK DJ producer Meet Katie. I thought it would be good to try laying it out and mixing it with Machina to see what I still relied on the door for. Firstly, in earlier tutorials, I said that one of the reasons I liked working with Machina as a plugin was because I preferred working with the door's timeline, which locks to Machina's in this mode. However, with version 2 here, if I wanted to make changes to my arrangement, it's much easier to loop a small section now, with looping being completely free rather than restricted to the selected scene. So if I wanted to loop a small part of the end of the breakdown, which is one giant scene, then I can do it right here just by dragging the edges of the loop bracket. Another thing I was having to do was to run any audio out of Machina when I wanted to add any side chaining to it. But this is another feature that's been thankfully added to version 2, as you can see on the compressor effect here. Now we have the main parameter display, which you'll also notice has a classic and feedback mode now, with feedback being a slightly more vintage sounding and less precise response. And then there's the sidechain input options, which you simply set to the source you want to trigger the sidechain. In this case, I've got a kick in group G, which is playing a simple four to the floor, and has its output turned right down. Then the amount of sidechaining is set with the gain of that signal. And of course the threshold, ratio, and remaining compressor settings on the main display. So I've got this pumping effect set up quite heavily on the individual pad sounds, and then a more gentle pumping effect on the entire atmospheric synth sounds group here. Like I said, the mixing and editing on this update, particularly with the new studio controller, are at a point now where it's just as easy to arrange whole songs within Machina. But for anyone still wanting to run things from tracks in the door, then version 2 makes it even easier to do this. There are now two export switches one for audio and one for MIDI. So if I want to bounce a pattern with all sounds, then I stay in regular pad mode, or I can switch to keyboard mode to bounce just the single selected sounds events, then click and hold on the audio export switch to create a new audio file, which can be dragged onto new sound slots in Machina or out into the door. Or I can choose a new part I've added here like this ride symbol, which it might be slightly better to trigger using a MIDI clip in live, and then drag the MIDI export switch out onto a MIDI track. The next steps are exactly the same as I've shown in my previous tutorials on version 1. So you just set the MIDI I.O. either directly on the MIDI track or on the external instrument effect so that the MIDI is going to Machina. Then, if you want to use a unique MIDI channel, you can set one below, like MIDI channel 2. Then in Machina, the only difference is you now have dedicated channel settings for sounds and groups on the central strip. So with the sound selected, if I click on the channel switch and then input, and then the MIDI tab, then I can activate that input and choose MIDI channel 2 to set up the sound for triggering with the MIDI track in the door. And don't forget to delete the events from the pattern in Machina of course, so the sound's not being triggered from two places. As for routing the audio out, you may prefer to stay in Machina now, as mixing with the new mixer display is much better. But if you want to route it out, then that's easier too, as you can clearly see all the audio and MIDI routings here when the I.O. switch is active. 
and can make changes to one or more sounds instantly to route them wherever you like. I'll just send the ride to external output 2 for now, which is the second stereo output pair that was selected as the audio input as default on Live's external instrument device. So the audio is now routing to that track, as well as MIDI being sent from it. Now let's move on to automation, which is the area that a lot of you are probably most interested in. This has again been improved with version 2, with virtually any parameter now being accessible. I'll give you some examples in my arrangement here to show you what the advantages of using the door for this purpose are. Firstly then, I just wanted to highlight the difference between modulation and automation. Modulation is the capturing of parameter changes within clips in Machina either by recording with auto-write or drawing them in. For example, if I wanted to add a filter effect to the bass group at the end of the breakdown so the lower frequencies roll off, then it's easy to do right here by adding a filter to the group, setting it to high pass, and then bringing the cutoff and resonance right down so it's having no effect. Then, if I want to create a rise in cutoff in this pattern, I can tweak the dial while the pattern plays with auto-write on, or draw it in by clicking on the outer ring round the dial to create a modulation track for it in the pattern section below. Then, if I zoom into the last four bars, and also drag the modulation section out so there's more room, then I can draw in an appropriate curve. Modulation events are created on each step of the grid, don't forget. So if you want a more precise curve, then set a smaller step size or turn the grid off. And another good improvement here is that the default undo command is now take rather than step undo. So hitting undo now gets rid of all those modulation events rather than individual ones one by one, which was a pain with version one. So now that modulation is created, we get a nice filter sweep in that clip, but all other patterns for that group will be unaffected. So these are the main two differences between modulation and automation. Modulation is only carried out temporarily in individual patterns, and its events are relative, so can only modulate the parameter up or down in relation to the position the control is in. Automation on the other hand is permanent, and absolute, so can set the value anywhere in the MIDI range and will affect the whole arrangement rather than change from pattern to pattern. As it's not limited to pattern use, it also means you can automate the master channel settings as well as groups and sounds. To show you an example of when you might want to add automation, let's jump to the start of the arrangement now. There are a few things I want to do in these 16 bars, which are actually being created by only two scenes, but a section that size is often being made by a lot more scenes, so adding long effects progressions can be tricky as lots of new patterns would need to be made. Firstly, I want the two sidechain pad sounds to fade in slowly across the whole intro. And secondly, I want the drum group's bottom end to only come in after the 16 bars. So what I need to do is automate the cutoff of the filter on the drum group and the level of the two pad sound slots. This is really easy to do. First, I need to click on the downward arrow to display the automation pane. Here, you can assign MIDI values to parameters by learning, so you can use a connected external device to control or automate parameters, or you can click on host to use the door. Then I just choose the parameters to automate, so the two pad sounds, channel output settings, and then the level dial here. Clicking enable sets them up on auto IDs one and two. Then on my drums, it's the groups filter cutoff which is now on Auto ID 3. Then, in Live, I just click on the Configure switch on Machina's device, after which I can go back and click on those parameters to add them to the automatable parameter list. These parameters then show up on the MIDI track in the arrangement so I can create a nice gradual fade in for both of the pad sounds. And this is much easier in the door, 
with a linear curve being created simply from a couple of breakpoints. And then we'll have the drums filter cutoff raised up on those 16 bars as well. I think I'll add a filter sweep at the end too, just before the drop. And in Logic Pro, the process is basically the same for all of that, in that I've got an additional software instrument track with no instrument on it, set to MIDI channel 2, and connected to the channel with the machine on in the environment, after which exporting the sounds events by drag and drop, and then activating its MIDI input on channel 2, allows me to play the ride symbol from the track. However, routing the audio out needs to be done on a separate audio or auxiliary track if you want to mix it in Logic. Then the parameters enabled for host automation can be found in the parameter list on that track, after which a curve can be drawn. To demonstrate a separate point to end this tutorial on, I thought I'd show what happens when you automate a parameter that's already being modulated. So I've created a new ACID baseline here, which has a filter on it, creating a nice effect as the cutoff modulates up and down on certain steps. As this parameter has also been enabled for host automation though, I can find it on ID4 on the track in Logic and can add a long filter sweep there too. After which you can see, as the transport plays, you get the filter cutoff raising slowly according to the automation setting, whilst the modulation values shift it up or down in repeating values relative to the constantly rising automated position. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. See you next time. Thank you.